Well, Jared, today we're going to be looking in for a morales in the old Douglas fir habitat, anywhere from 5,500 to about 6,500 feet. And we'll be looking especially in the areas which are intermixed with some aspen trees, some quaking aspens, and also the uh, choke cherries and some of the uh, uh, Rocky Mountain maple trees, kind of in the edge habitat, and that's where they tend to want to grow. Uh, we want to look kind of on the north facing slopes. Uh, western and north facing slopes a little bit moist a little bit wetter although this year it's been so wet that it may not be an issue because it's been a pretty wet spring once we got to the area he wanted to try first he lined us up in the direction we would all take as we made a line and worked down we all spread out and started working down the slope staying in the stand of douglas fir as we hiked we were also told that the morels were often near old down logs and such so we made sure to keep a close eye around them we were spotting lots of other kinds of mushrooms, but so far, no morels. However, when looking for morels, if you're seeing lots of these different types of mushrooms, it tells you that you're looking in the right area and the right elevation, because the morel mushrooms like the same type of habitat and conditions as the majority of other mushrooms. All right, so as we're up here looking for these dark morels, just to show you the contrast first, I wanna quickly review when Abby and I were out just a couple weeks ago along the river for some turkey hunting, and we picked up a bunch of the light morels, or uh, I've heard them called blonde morels, but completely different area, as you can see, and, and color and kind of um, how, how easily they are to find. So let me show you that. So I was surprised when I actually picked up the first ones just out in the open grassy areas away from the water and away from even the muddy damp spots. In fact, it seemed they weren't even necessarily in the shade. These morels are pretty easy to identify with their oddly shaped tops. I'm not even quite sure how to describe that appearance, but as you can see, they have their own kind of look. So far, we weren't able to pick up a pattern on where they would be. They just seem to be in random spots. The best thing we could do was just cover a lot of ground and keep a sharp eye out. In fact, some of them we nearly missed as we walked right by them, only to see them when we turned around. Abby was proving that she had a good eye for them herself, as she picked up quite a few. The stem broke off of this one that Abby picked up, but it allows you to see how the morel is hollow inside. That's a classic characteristic of morels that's actually important to know about. All right, so now that you saw what Abby and I did and the kind of the country it was in, um, let's show you how we look for these dark morels and you can see the big contrast. Cade was the first to yell that he might have found one. As we went to see, we quickly found that it wasn't, but he had a good eye to be able to spot that in the undergrowth. It was about 10 minutes later that Jennifer had found the first morels of the day. They weren't big, but it was a start. Yeah, first two, I guess, small little ones, but yeah, they like to be next to the dead trees, so that's a good place to look. After that, all we seemed to find were other types of mushrooms, and lots of them. We just kept plugging along, assuming we would find them eventually. With the morels that Jennifer found being small, we were probably still a little high in elevation, so maybe a little lower would pan out better. Last year we did really well about another 100 yards up in all this country through here. And then this road goes around even on the other side. But there was quite a few real nice ones right through here. Okay. Uh, same time of year and same type of... You know, we're seeing other mushrooms now. Right. So... <laughs> right. It's hunting. All right, sure enough, up in this area that Dan said was good last year, he just yelled and said he found found one so maybe we'll finally get into them here. You can see there's one right there. There's one right next to Cade is it? Or? Yep Cade. Right there. And those are dark. Yeah. And those are fairly new looking but uh, but they're good. <coughs> and generally what you want to do when you pick these is either cut them off I have a knife if you need. or you want to pinch Pinch the base, just kind of pinch the base and twist. So you kind of want to leave that uh, mycelium in the ground so it can grow next year. So that spot will grow another one right there? Maybe not that spot, but certainly this area because underneath the ground there's the mycelium and the mycelium is what makes the fruit, the, the mushrooms are fruit. And that could be a pretty big area of mycelium underneath the ground. Okay. There is another one coming up right next to it where you pulled that to the left. Oh yeah, this one right here. That one's pretty small yet, though. Pretty oh, here's here. two right here. Oh, here's two right here. 
Oh yeah, so you can see how dark they are. It's even dark. Yeah, don't step on that one. And commonly you'll see them in, in twos, it seems, in this, in this area. Okay. And you want to look for the hollow inside, so they'll be perfectly hollow inside. No white or yellow fuzz. That'll be a true morel if it's hollow. And so it tells me, Jared, we're probably, you know, a couple days early from prime. But who knows what we're going to find through here, because you can see they're starting to come out. Right. And, uh... So you see how he pinched that? There you are. And then smell that. It really has a really nice mushroomy smell that if you, in the stem there. You saw that Dan had found our first morels, and later he found some others, except something didn't look quite right. They looked more like the light morels. Upon closer inspection, they weren't the real thing. So these here are a verbal false morel. They look like a true morel. One way you can tell is that the way they connect to the cap is at the top. And then the other way, if you cut these open in half, you can see they're not hollow inside. You can see that that's actually full. And that would be a false morel, and this is a poisonous morel. When you're out uh, mushroom picking, make sure you go with someone that is, has, knows morels and knows the identity between the good morels that you can eat and also the false morels, uh, which are poisonous. There's a good little pocket here. Oh, here's a big one too. Just a few yards from where Dan found those last morels, I spotted a few more. So go ahead and get this one here. You saw how they did it. Okay, now here's one right here. Oh, there's another that came up by it. Now there's the big one right up there. You see that big one right here in front, yeah, Abby? That's a good one, yeah. So pinch at the bottom and twist. No. Looking closely in the area, I spotted even more. Dan had mentioned if you find some, there are usually others nearby. And he was right. If you look right over here, and there's two of them right there. I, I could the top one. Okay, look around by your feet and make sure. See, there's another there. I got it. Where? Right there? Yep, right in front. Okay, you're going to step on them right in the middle of you. There's a couple nice ones. Yeah. Put them in the bag. That's a nice one. Yeah, we're picking up a few more right here. Was oh, there another one? No. Oh. About 30 yards up the hill, Jennifer found another nice one. Nice. Not far from that spot, Dan found a pretty nice sized one, and sure enough, Jennifer picked up a couple more just a few feet away. A little one behind it. Yeah. So these three, this one was right here, and then those two right there, we haven't really looked yet, so I imagine there should be more. Yeah, a lot of times we find these black morels on the edge of the Douglas fir area and also right on the transition zones between these uh, aspen and Douglas fir areas. A lot of times it's on the north facing slopes because it's a little bit wetter and right in these uh, transition zones. Looking closely, Jennifer spotted a couple more. All right, so again, hunting these morels, this is nothing like those light morels that just really pop out when you do find them. But, you know, here's one right here, right on a trail. It's right in the dark, um, old pine cones in the dirt. And really, it just blends right in. So this is, this is a different ball game, but I don't know if you can see this, how, how much it blends in. But this is hunting for you. Once again, you can see how hard these can be to spot. You just can't nonchalantly hike around. You really have to be looking hard. Even still, I bet we walked by twice as many as we found. But we did continue to pick up a few. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to the Outdoor Youth Challenge YouTube channel.